talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, what student government does, see if any of you guys would be interested. So student government is in charge of things like fundraising opportunities for the school, planning school-wide events, and incorporating student ideas into student life. That is a job that's specifically meant for the great um, representatives, and just promoting school spirit in general. Um, does one of the great representatives want to talk about kind of what that entails a little bit more, or talk about what we're looking for in a great representative? Yeah, so um, obviously if you're a great representative, your goal is to be able to represent your grade in anything. Um, you have to compromise yourself or other students, take into account what they would like, what they would like to contribute to anything involving our school, and you have to be willing and committed to be a part of everything involving the student government and be ready to take that role and take account of any So thank you to our student government executive board for joining us. And if anyone is interested in joining Student Gov or have more questions about it, you can talk to myself or Ms. Schaefer here tonight. We are more than happy to answer your questions about Student Gov and all things extracurricular and student life at Baruch. Okay, so now we're going to invite up Ms. Castagna and Ms. Whitfield, and they're going to talk about your summer assignment. Class of 2028, we're very happy uh, to meet you. I'm Ms. Castagna, I'm um, one of the global literature teachers for ninth and 10th grade. This is my co-teacher, Ms. Whitfield, um, who also teaches ninth and 10th, and we are joined by Mr. Lewis, who many of you will meet in September. Uh, he's the third global literature teacher for ninth and 10th. Um, so we look forward to meeting you guys and, and getting to know you a little more in the breakout rooms later, but we're just gonna quickly talk about um, the summer assignment, of course, we want you to have fun to relax this summer, but we do want you to read a little bit, and it'll also kind of give us um, something to talk about and connect us when we come back in September. Um, so in preparation for our first unit together, um, we're going to ask you to read a collection of four short stories. And all, even though the stories are all very different, they all connect to two of our important essential questions for the year. Um, which you can see up here are what is identity and what factors contribute to the development of a person's identity. So during that first unit, we'll talk a lot about what identity means, um, what that looks like for the characters in the stories, and then you'll think about um, your own identity and what that word means for you. And then the second question is how can literature be a mirror and a window into our own lives? And how can literature reflect our own experiences and identities? So we ask you to do um, a lot of make a lot of connections. Ms. Smith is going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but we want you to find um, stories that really like speak to you in some way, make you think about your own lives and your own experiences. So all of these stories um, will be available to you, both paper copies, they're in their folders, right? you, you have them in your folders, and they'll also be on the Baruch website if you prefer to read them digitally. And we're going to ask you to read all four stories, um, La Guerra, The Paper Menagerie, The Scholarship Jacket, and Black Enough. They're all very different, but they all connect to our year-long theme of identity. Um, so we love these stories. And hope that you enjoy them as well. Um, so we ask that you read all four. Even if you've read them before, please make sure that you reread them so they're fresh in your mind and you're ready to discuss them. And then um, after you've read all four stories, you're gonna choose two that you feel like you have a lot to say about. Um, and you're gonna do some writing about two of those stories, which Ms. Whitfield is gonna do something more. Um, right, I'm Ms. Whitfield, so um, I love a good or graphic organizer, so I'm going to show you the one that you're going to be using to organize your thinking. Um, yes, All right. Um, after you read those um, four short stories, you're going to choose two short stories to help you respond um, in a graphic organizer, but also you're going to type it out in paragraph form. Um, so first, after you choose those two short stories, you're going to complete the graphic organizer. So on the graphic organizer, you're going to make an inference about the main character of the story and then what factors, meaning family relationships, environment, um, or friendships, 
can contribute to the development of the character's identity. And then you're going to develop a connection with the text. So that can be text itself, meaning your own personal connection with the story or the character. It can be text to text. So meaning that you're connected it to another text that you read in the past or text the world. So the world outside of you. So it can be a social issue. It can be something that you've read before and um, or experiences that you've read before. If you watch Dr. Phil, you can connect with Dr. Phil. <laughs> Slowly up to you. Um, and then what connects, so you're thinking about what connections can you make to your story. That's fine. So if you open up your folder, you'll see the graphic organizer. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, do they have the graphic organizer in there? Yeah. Okay. So you just look at the graphic organizer? Yes. So the graphic organizer, um, just make sure to complete that first. So in the beginning of the school year, you'll see that it's broken up into the different components based on the directions. And you're just filling that out, okay? Um, yep, perfect, thank you. Um, so you're just filling that out after you choose your two stories. So we're gonna ask, right, so as Ms. Whitfield said, you're gonna fill out the graphic organizer just to kind of help you organize your ideas and then type it up into paragraph form. Um, the last piece of your response is um, is telling us a little bit about yourself. So we'd love to get to know you right from the get-go. So really, you can tell us anything you want us to know about you, anything you feel comfortable sharing. Um, so we give you a few guiding questions. You don't have to answer these specifically. If there are other things you want to tell us about, um, were you able to connect to the characters in any way? What do you love to read? What are you doing this summer? How are you feeling about starting high school? Or anything that you want to tell us about. So that last piece is, is just personal information that you want to share with us. Okay. Uh, if you have questions, um, we might be in one of your breakout rooms, but if you don't see us, our email addresses are at the bottom of the letter, so feel free to email us over the summer as you're working if you have any questions or just want to check in. students together because uh, students are going to take placement exams so we're going to have Miss Chow come up and she's going to talk about what's expected of you. why we give it hi guys I'm Miss Chow I'm one of the math teachers here at Peru um, in a little bit you'll be taking your math placement test and what this test usually is for is to just let us see um, which math classes you might be placed in this upcoming year. Um, this test is really short. It only tests like several algebra skills, such as evaluating expressions or equations, inequalities. Um, it tests your ability to understand what a concept is, as well as um, creating or solving um, linear functions. Um, so it's going to be a consists like 13 multiple choice questions, with you, which you will take later in your classrooms um, later this evening. So with this placement test, you have two different pathways for math at Peru. So if you're placed in Algebra 1 for freshman year, then you go into Geometry, Algebra 2 as a junior, and then you can end up with AP Calc AB, College Calc, or Regular Calc as a senior. And then if you're placed in Geometry as a freshman, then you're um, then you will follow path two, which is a sophomore algebra, algebra two as a sophomore, pre-calc as a junior, and then you'll also end up with AP Calc AB, college calc, or calc as a senior. And then AP stats will be an elective um, that you choose to take when you're a junior. So, and then if you have any more questions, I'll be upstairs on the third floor later um, to answer any questions you might have. Good evening, buenas noches. Um, I'm one of the three 
the Spanish teachers here at Peru. So um, we are going to ask the students all to take a um, assessment just to make sure that we place you in the best level possible next year. Um, so nothing to be nervous or stressed about. We you know that some have never taken any Spanish before, and that's fine. Um, the first section of the test asks you your background with Spanish. So do, do you learn it in school for how long, or do you speak it at home? maybe outside of school. Um, if your answer to both of those are no, I've never learned it and I don't know it from other, any other aspect of my life, then you just write that and you hand in your test and you're done. Uh, but we just want to make sure we have a record that you all were here and got a chance to take it. Um, if you do know some, give it a try. Don't worry if you you know do the best you can. It's just going to help us see um, where there's another piece of information to place you next year, um, so it be Spanish 1 or Spanish 2. And I'll be on the third floor as well, uh, if you have any questions. So um, just a quick, this is, uh, we shared this, but we just wanted to now that your like, minds are here, group, um, this is our course sequence. One of the things I hope you took note of is we want to place you in the right class in ninth grade. Ninth grade is a very important year to transition to high school. Often we hear students say it's a lot more independent work is expected, that the level is going to go up as you get older and take on more responsibility. So we really want students in the right class where they feel most successful. But as you heard with both the math and the Spanish, there are opportunities, the opportunities don't close. So you're not on a track. So if you take algebra one, as a ninth grader and you are confident and feel like you're ready for calculus as a senior, that opportunity is there equally to you as it is to students who come in with geometry. We just want you to have a strong foundation. For Spanish, you can move all the way through AP Spanish language. Typically, that would be students who enter at Spanish too, um, but some students, if you're a heritage speaker, if you're fluent at home, we have had students who have been able um, definitely to move into the AP level or if you study it through high school. So those opportunities are there. Um, we offer the arts. We have studio art you'll take in ninth and 10th grade. We also have a lot of art electives. So when you're in the upper grades, we have everything starting in ninth grade actually. We have electives that start in the second semester. We have film, music history, um, art and aesthetic. So there's different opportunities for arts. Um, and ELA, STEM, science, and, and social studies. The other thing is just there's an update to our science sequence, so I wanted to make sure. So starting next year, all students who have not taken living environment will take Regents Biology, they're changing the name. If you took living environment and passed the Regents, you will not be in biology, you will take ecology, um, which is a non-Regents life science course. And then all students will move into chemistry, and then physics, which are regents courses. And senior year, we're gonna have a lot of science opportunities for students. Those are gonna evolve once you're a senior. So don't worry about it too much now, but the opportunity for more AP science classes, dual credit college level science classes, and also uh, forensic science. We also offer AP psychology as an elective, um, and that will be when you're in the 11th grade. So we're really excited. We have a lot of opportunities for advanced courses as you move through the years, and all the opportunities are open to all of our students. We just ask that ninth grade, you're gonna focus on having a strong foundation, getting those habits. Um, and an important class I think we talked about last time is you're all going to take seminar first semester as your elective as ninth graders, and that's the class that's helping you give that foundation to take all these classes. It's gonna help you with your time management, study skills, um, organization, note taking, all those pieces that really help individuals be successful, both in school, college, and work. All right, so now we're going to hear from Mr. Rico and also our AP and Athletic Director. Hi, everyone. So I'll be speaking um, a little bit about all the sports up here, but I guess one of the things I want to mention since I have a captive audience and it's exciting is that um, summer is the time to think about getting your paperwork in order if you are thinking about participation in PL PSAL sports. And I know uh, most families have one physical a year and there is an in-depth medical consent form that needs to be filled out at the doctor's office. So if you're headed to the doctor, this summer at any point, and you think you want to try out for any of our PSAL teams, bring the paperwork with you. 
Um, in your folders today, there's a flyer advertising our athletics program, and there's a QR code that takes you to a Google form where you can tell me if you're interested in anything and give us your email address to get in touch with you over the summer. Um, that same Google form will also take you to the required forms that you need for PSAL participation. There's also hard paper copies available in the gym downstairs. So on your way out today, you can stop by the athletics table and get paper copies of that form. I message this a lot because sometimes people want to participate in our sports program and getting to the doctor is like one of the biggest challenges into getting all ready for that. So these are our teams. We have 10 PSAL sports teams here. We only have one junior varsity team. Um, but we have lots and lots of varsity sports in the fall. Um, we have both boys and girls varsity soccer, and those triumphs are actually in. Woo! Yes. Those triumphs are actually in August. So of all of the sports that we have, if you are thinking about playing soccer for us, we do want to know that today. So make sure um, you fill out that Google form and let us know sometime soon so that we can be sure to keep you on the information emails about when those summer tryouts are. If you're thinking, oh no, we're always away in August as a family, does that mean they can't participate on the team? Not exactly. Sometimes the um, coaches are able to have other tryouts when the school year resumes for additional players and we'll finalize the roster at that point. We also have a girls varsity volleyball team in the fall. Might be a good time to point out that nearly every single one of our teams made it to the playoffs this year. We have a very small school, but a very accomplished um, sports program, so we're really proud of that. Our winter sports teams, we have boys and girls varsity basketball, as well as that JV basketball team I mentioned earlier, and we have a wrestling program. And in the spring, we have boys and girls, we have uh, baseball and softball programs, and we also have a brand new badminton team. Um, I want to quickly mention something called all access and shared access. In the past two years, PSAL has been piloting something. So if you go to a small school that doesn't have a program for a sport that you are really interested in, I, as your athletic director, can advocate to get you to join a team at another campus. They don't always give us the opportunity, but this year, for example, we had boys varsity volleyball players share access to another campus because we don't have a program for that. And so it is possible to play a sport that we don't have at another school. We're also looking to align with another school and sort of share access to both of our sports to give us things like a uh, track option, for example. So that's all remains to be seen, but something that I definitely wanted to plug. So there's a flyer in there with a Google form. I collect the results on that, so if you have any questions, you can put them there. And the last thing I'll say is that our ambassadors tonight, not only are they student government representatives and ambassadors for the school, many of them are student athletes and managers for our teams, and they'll be happy to tell you a lot more anecdotally about what it's like to play on a Baruch sports team. Thank you. Okay. So now is when we're going to uh, break off by advisory. So just a recap, what is our advisory program? Because I said you're gonna meet your advisees. So advisory meets every day, five days a week, and you're gonna stay with the same group until you graduate from high school. So there is about five other students in your grade that will be in your advisory because it's a mixed grade class. So there'll be ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. So you'll be joining where the seniors are graduating out, you're, you're taking their spot. So there's gonna be an existing advisory that you're joining, and that's where we do community building, uh, communication, announcements, information, um, and, and so on. So advisory is a program, so we're gonna have you group with a bunch of advisories, so we've got five, so each room, we're gonna have about five advisories in there, so you'll meet other people and also some students from your advisory. We also do competitions grade wide. We just had our field day. We go to Asphalt Green on the Upper East Side. It was a really fun last week. Was that last week? Yeah. A lot of events. Um, and we competed by grade, relay races. It was really fun. So sometimes we're in advisory, sometimes grade. We all kind of mix together. But it will be an opportunity for you to know students in your grade, but also across the school. Families, so they've, they've left. They've started high school. Uh, you've got done. Um, so your role as a parent is not over, right? We say it's still important to stay involved in high school, stay connected. So I'm gonna invite our PTA to come up and they're going to welcome you to our school. 
And then we're going to have time for some Q&A, and also Mr. Kaiser is going to talk special education. So we're just letting you know what comes next. You can stay put, no more is coming. So now, we're moving by slides. We're going to welcome our outgoing and incoming PTA. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Ladies. So this is just a small group of the PTA executive board. Not everyone can be here tonight. Um, and we want to welcome you to Peru. Uh, very exciting to start your student, your child's high school career. Um, so hopefully you're as excited as we were. I'm, a, I'm graduating out. My son's a senior. So um, this is my last year here. But very excited for all four years to be here. Um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Mira Wagman. I'm an outgoing uh, PTA co-president along with Danielle. Here. So we were the co-presidents for this year, but more importantly for you, your class, the incoming co-presidents for next year are Julie, Bob, Bos, and Katrina Mach, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Take a good look because you're going to be hearing from them a lot. Um, after they introduce themselves, we're just going to go over some of the highlights of what the PTA does and how you can get involved. Um, my daughter Amelia is a sophomore here. Um, this is an amazing community. I'm really excited that we're getting some new people here and we want you all to be involved with the PTA. Please, please, I have sign up sheets that I'm gonna pass around. Just put your name and your email address on there. Even if you're not gonna come to the PTA meetings, just put this on because this is where you get your emails from us to tell you what's going on in the school, okay? So please, please join, we love having you, thank you. She also has an IAP, so it makes it just a lot of things from a parent perspective. Uh, and then I'll introduce Martha O'Day. She is uh, our long lived treasurer, a very important woman here. She handles all the financials for the PTA. She's the most important be behind the scenes part of our board, and we're lucky enough that she's going to continue being a treasurer for one more year. Um, her daughter is going to be a senior next year, so thank you, Martha. Um, and I, I want to just clarify what Julie helpfully said with the emails. So you're going to sign up, uh, you're going to hear all about Mom's membership toolkit, and you're going to sign up to the school emails. And you're going to get lots of important information, including newsletters that, in, that will have PTA information, but the PTA sends out separate emails. And so if you, you need to be signed up for both. Um, it's not an automatic thing where the school emails will have all the details that, we, that the PTA will send out throughout the year. So if you didn't sign up downstairs for the for PTA, please fill out this form going around and all you need to put is your first and last name and your email address. And then you'll be added to the PTA uh, email chain and get all of those important uh, emails about the things I'm about to talk about. So the PTA um, is held, uh, there's PTA meetings every month and they're held in the evenings at 6.30 p.m. over Zoom. We aim to have one in-person meeting per semester, so two in-person meetings throughout the school year. That would be here at the school, some refreshments, a little meet and greet, um, but really to make it as accessible to as many parents as possible. The goal is to do it after work hours and over Zoom so you can join from wherever. Um, depending on the, the months and the schedules, we have up to 75 or 100 parents attending uh, over Zoom, which is exceptional attendance. Um, so please look out for emails. There'll be emails coming out right at the beginning of the year, setting all the dates for all meetings for the whole year. So you can put them in your calendar and have them noted and, and try to make yourself available. Um, they usually last about an hour. Every, every month there's a different guest speaker, which is somebody from the school that's gonna talk about things like uh, AP classes and AP exams or the sports programs or uh, teen mental health. We've had um, different speakers throughout the year from the school faculty and administration come into the meetings for the second half hour of the meetings uh, and share their experience and wisdom and provide really valuable information for you and your student as you navigate high school. So again, encourage you to really Try to make those meetings. Why, please? Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so again, this uh, QR code, if you, I think you have it in your rate list, there's, that's in your folder. So that, if you, if you sign up right now and get that over with, right, you're just signed up for all of the connection to the community portal. Um, so you can, you can click 
in there, if you don't want to write your name down here, yes, add me to the PTA mailing list, and then you, then you will get transferred over, but you have to check that box um, in, in this school portal. Um, this is where you can learn about um, how you can donate and how you can help the fundraising efforts that we do at the school. I'm going to talk about that more. Um, you can view and subscribe to the school calendar. Um, our parent coordinator, Liz, does a great job of having multiple different calendars. You can subscribe. You don't have to see all the sporting events if your child isn't involved in sports. You can pick and choose what it is you want to see on your calendar, but find all the information about what's going on in this school uh, at that portal. Um, you can also take advantage of online payments for um, school activities or field trips. So everything is really run through this portal and it's really essential if you want to keep up with what's going on in the school and your student um, and be able to have easy access on your phone or your computer to uh, sign up through this QR code. Um, it also is where the online school store uh, will be located and you can purchase uh, great group items on the, on the online store or actually in the physical store um, that will be open throughout the year. Okay. So how can you get involved in the PTA? Um, again, we just went through all the things, you know, just stay informed, read the emails, you know, come to the meetings, um, but then you can take it a step further. And the one thing I want to say about the PTA here, and I think Julie said it great, is this is a great community. The, the teachers and the faculty and the students all get together and do amazing things all year long. And if you're on the PTA, what the PTA does, not only fundraises to help support all of these great activities and opportunities for your students, but we volunteer at all the events, we help get the food for them, we help set things up and decorate and just make these things special, as special as can be and as successful as can be for your students. And so if you're involved in the PTA, whether you're, you, and I'll talk about joining the board in a second, whether you're you know, volunteering on the board and being joining us to, to help plan these events, or you're just a, you know, a parent at large in the body, in the community, co coming to these events, you're gonna be much more connected to what's going on in the school. We always talk about it, we joke about this, is how we stay close to our kids' lives, because we know what's going on, and sometimes they don't wanna tell us. <laughs> um, but, but that's how we know what, what they're experiencing and what they're doing. Um, we fundraise, obviously, so of course nothing's free. You're gonna see a lot of communication, including tonight, about fundraising through what we call our annual appeal. And we're gonna talk, in the next slide, we'll talk about what, what that fundraising does and what it helps give to the school to make it so great and, and be able to provide these opportunities for um, all of your students. So we really encourage you not only to sign up for the communications, but think about if you'd like to get involved, we're gonna hang out after this, and please come and talk to us. There's many spots on the PTA board still open. Um, we're looking for anywhere from actual named positions, like a co-corresponding secretary or a co-communications secretary that help with sending out emails and, and communicating through flyers and all of that, to grade reps. So if you're a grade rep for 9th, 10th, 11th, or well, you'll be 9th grade reps, you're, you attend the meeting, the board meetings. Um, you learn about what's going on, what we're planning well in advance. You help us communicate that to your grade specifically. It's a really great way to, to bond with your grade, to get to know other parents in your grade, and really also to get to know the teachers. Um, it's a great way to, to, to again, connect with the school on a, on a more deep level. Um, and then there's members at large, which are just, you know, no specific role. You're just on the board participating and helping out when and where you can. So there's there's all different levels of roles um, that need little bits of involvement up to much more um, you know, significant involvement where you're helping to make decisions and shape what the PTA is doing and how we're using the funds. Next slide, last one. So the family giving campaign, and again, you're gonna see a lot of this throughout the year. Um, and there is a flyer in your folder, in your blue folders, there's a flyer that looks a little bit like this. It has this image on it. It has all the different ways that you can contribute to the, to the annual appeal for the PTA. What, why we need to do this, that's, that's what drives all the great things that we're able to do. Some of the, these are just examples, but we provide um, assistance to the athletic programs. We provide the students with award, food for awards banquets. Uh, we help subsidize field trips so that every student, whether they can afford the fees or not, is able to go on the field trip. Um, we do the school newspaper, the school library, uh, and all of the great uh, community building events throughout the, the year 
are supported or at least assisted with PTA funding. Um, and without PTA funding, we just can't make all of these events happen. And let me tell you, the students love these events. I mean, they love going to them, they love throwing them. The students we saw, we just had a, a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society, and just seeing the student body come together and put, to, put on this amazing event, they were so proud of themselves. It's really, truly beautiful to see. But again, we need the funding to be able to do that. Uh, and of course, not, last but not least, our teacher appreciation. So, so you know, the teachers are one of the, the heart of this school. We really put on and try to thank them throughout the year um, and honor them during those teacher appreciation weeks. Um, and so that's another thing that the PTA funding does. I can't stress this enough, but any amount, there's many ways to give. You can give once, you can give twice, you can give a tiny little bit every week a little bit more once a month. And when I talk about any amount helps, we actually have this $5 Friday initiative going. We've been able to raise quite a significant amount of money with people just giving $5 every other every couple Fridays. Um, it really has made a difference and it has added significantly to our budget for the year. So I say, I know I always say, and I've heard other PTAs throughout the years, any amount counts and you're kind of like, well, but truly even $5 when you can give it, absolutely counts. So please consider uh, giving what you can, when you can. That's one quick thing I wanted to say about the $5 Fridays. What's helpful is that some of the grants that we receive from, you know, are, it is helpful to just show that there is um, contributions from a wide uh, birth of people in the, um, you know, student, in the parent body. So it's really helpful. And then the other pitch I'm going to make is for um, we have a uh, student, uh, a parent survey to fill out. Um, if you fill out that survey, um, it helps the school in terms of getting funding for um, uh, for Title What is it? Um, title One. Thank you. It is extremely important, and I have to say, I know that it seems um, sometimes um, like invasive that people are asking um, for information about that but it's so so helpful for the school that if you um, fill out that parent survey it is incredibly helpful to the school um, it can do things like um, I have friends who have students at other schools that have title one funding one of the things it funds is um, there they give uh, 15 applications uh, to college for free with your Title I uh, funding. There's all kinds of stuff that you can get. There's athletic funding. You know, um, there's a ton of funding that the school receives when you get that Title I funding. So even if you, it's annoying to fill out these surveys, but it is incredibly, incredibly helpful to the school. So we just ask that when you do receive that from the school, please, please fill it out. Thank you so much. And I really hope to see these, I love seeing so many pieces. I really want to see all these faces at the first um, meeting for um, this school. It is an amazing community. I came from another school. My daughter loves this school. The, the teachers here, the administration, everyone has been so welcoming. It is a beautiful school, and I am so delighted that you guys are here and that we're going to make this school fantastic. So thank you. <laughs> want to talk about the PTA opportunities, if you just want to talk about our experiences uh, here at Peru, we're going to hang out and mingle, so please come talk to us. Thank you. Oh, sorry, one quick thing. There's merch, there's merchandise downstairs. I, I came and bought merchandise for my kid on the first day, this day last year. So if you want to get your kids some Baruch merchandise, it's downstairs. So, and we're here to answer any questions if you have. Oh, can you hear me? I'm loud. <laughs> it's nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that wasn't scripted. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, we just have a couple of questions that were filled out in the form. So we're just going to touch on these and then we're going to have an opportunity for a breakout session with Mr. Kaiser. Um, so one of the questions was how do I apply for a 504, Mr. Kaiser? Uh, yeah, so uh, briefly there 
is going to be added to our school website admittedly today or tomorrow if we have an online 504 application. Um, but I will be, when we're done with the FAQs, taking interested parents just around the corner to another room where we can talk a little bit more in depth about our special education program and the 504 process. So if you're interested in that, we'll switch to another room when we're done with that. Thank you, thank you. When will students receive their schedules? I believe that is the first day of school. Oh, let me be correct. <laughs> it, so you, they'll receive their schedules either the first day of school, but it's in the NICSA account. Right. Usually you see it, and that usually comes out right around the beginning of the school year. So you should have a NICSA account set up from your middle school if you're new to New York City Public Schools. Ms. Grove, our parent coordinator, who you can find, uh, she'll be sending out forms over the summer and ways to sign up for things. You're going to hear more from us over the summer, right? Um, and so she'll be sending out, get, making sure, helping you sign up your NICSA, but that's Ms. Grove, Ms. Grove give a wave. She's our parent coordinator extraordinaire. We'll get to know her very well. And uh, yes, yeah, so the NICSA account, having that allows you to see their report card grades and their schedule. So that usually comes out right before the first day of school um, when they'll get their schedules. The school supplies, we're also gonna send that out to you, I actually, just met with the teachers today, and I just said, the families are coming, give us a list, they're asking. So we're going to send that out now that we have everybody's email. We'll send a follow-up with school supplies that are recommended for the first day of school. Um, so yeah. The homework policy is a, a vital part of um, education and learning. Uh, mostly at Baruch, I, I would say philosophically, it is practice um, for what's learned. And it's, uh, it is a portion of a student's overall average for that course, but it's, uh, it's a small portion of uh, between 10 and 20%, depending on the course. Um, average will be an average as the whole part of the What platforms are used for grading and homework? So we have uh, two essential platforms that we use. One is uh, Google Classroom, and that's a place where like assignments will be um, posted most regularly. Um, often teachers will give feedback and grades on, on the Google Classroom as well, but our main um, avenue for parents and students to see current grades is uh, Jupyter. We use Jupyter Ed, we have Jupyter accounts, and there you can see your students' daily attendance, period by period, and their um, average, uh, their up-to-date average as up-to-date as a current teacher is with input, because it, there is some data input um, necessary for that. Uh, we do have benchmarks built into our school calendar to say, okay, Jupiter uh, grades are up to date on this date and then a month and a half later on that date. So we're transparent with both teachers and students that you can look for updated um, averages on Jupiter by such and such date so that we don't, you know, just just so you know, give teachers some grace to grade and actually put stuff up. They're not getting the grades up there for like 30 essays, like 40 hours later. It might take a while. And students will get their Jupyter accounts in um, the seminar elective in the fall, and there'll be a student account and a parent account as well. So they'll get those in the fall once they start school. School hours. We're not sure. <laughs> we are sure. As of like a half an hour ago. Um, so they're the same as they are this year. So the school day technically starts at 8.20, but our doors open at 8 a.m. every morning unless a teacher has a special event before school like a makeup test or a meeting. So at 8 a.m. we open up the doors and your students will come through with their ID, which by the way, there's an ID form in their folders for them to visit the college and get their photos taken there by July 15th because then they print them and give them to us to give out to your students in the fall. And our school day, like instructionally, ends at 2.40, but the building is generally open till about 4.30 with after school clubs and events and extra help and things like that. If they play sports, all different kinds of hours depending on if they're practicing at another field or have a game. And of course, sometimes we have special evening events that keep us here later. Yeah, so the ID, so we are affiliated with Baruch College, so they will be getting a Baruch College ID. It's a high school college ID. It's a different color for the Baruch High School students. The ID Center is on this street. It's on 25th Street. Um, you're going to go east, and it's um, where the college, the 25th Street becomes pedestrian only. There's no cars. So it's between Lexington and 3rd Avenues. 
25th Street in the library building, which is a brick building. Uh, when you go in there, you just ask for the ID Center. It's right by the turnstiles. The hours of the ID Center are posted on the paper in their folders, so you can just, you don't have to make an appointment. You just stop by. Unfortunately, they're closed tonight, or you can go now, but come back. Check out the neighborhood, get a sense of Baruch. You have uh, the beginning of the summer to get out there as well. Um, and you don't have to go, you can just send your child or go with them or have them go with a friend. And they have the list of all of our students, they'll take their photo, and then again, they'll get their IDs on the first day of school when they come to Baruch. Those IDs can also be used to enter the library. So our students have access to the Baruch College Library. They can use those IDs to go to the library on their own at any time and they can use that for if they need a place to do their homework or study or do any research that's available to our students. Hi, so um, lunch periods are there, well most days there are three different lunch periods, there, so some days there are four different lunch periods, and um, our programming is very dynamic, so it could, it could be that you have lunch period five on Monday and period seven on Tuesday. So the, the students program is very dynamic and um, classes do not meet the same exact period um, of the day, um, five days a week. English, social science, math, science, support, classes, Spanish, they all meet five days a week, but they might be uh, different periods of the day. So the programming is unique, but they do have lunch period, that's for sure. And so the last question was pre-entered and it is, are there eligibility criteria for clubs such as Model UN and Debate? Uh, interest and commitment. Uh, if you want to join, you can join and uh, we'll wel we welcome you. So Model UN um, is a wonderful club. They present at the United Nations. Um, that's a club that meets after school, so students just join in the fall. We have a big club fair here in the cafeteria. Students can learn about all the clubs that we offer and they can attend those. And then debate, this year we had a grant, it was a class. Um, it's gonna turn into a club because now we have a group of students who are trained in the debate. And we actually went to the citywide competition first time ever in a long time and we won. We won the debate. So we're very excited. So we're athletes and debaters and academic. We're everything at Baruch. Um, so there's a great opportunity and the 10th graders are gonna know how to do it. So they're gonna help lead the club for the uh, interested students. It's gonna open it up to other grades as well. So what we're gonna do um, now is we're gonna uh, give you the opportunity to meet with Ms. Grove. Ms. Grove, are you speaking? Or am I just saying? Are you talking or no? Yes, she is. Okay. I'll come in. Ms. Grove, welcome Ms. Grove, our current coordinator. Yay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Liz Grove, I'm your parent coordinator, um, and my role at the school is to support families. On the screen is my contact information, I'm always available. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, most of you should be getting my emails, I send out a lot of emails, um, and if you're not receiving them, then please, uh, you can take a picture of the QR code, or you can email me and just send me your address and your contact information because sometimes the information that we get through admissions is not accurate and so if your email address has changed or your cell phone number has changed please send that to me so that i can make sure that we have up-to-date contact information for your family and that we can reach out to you over the summer with a lot of important information for back to school Oh, so uh, over the summer, this is just to share with you the link to our website, um, which has a lot of uh, registration forms, a few registration forms, depending if you're coming from public school or from private or charter school, there are different registration forms for you to fill out and you'll find all of that um, on our website. And this just tells you um, a few of the forms to expect. It includes the student ID, uh, the health form, which you can give to us in the fall with your immunization record for your student, and then um, an important form that you can fill out starting in July is the family income inquiry form. So you can do that online, and this is really important for families to fill out because this 
uh, is a way for schools to get much needed funding for our program. And also uh, it's a way for uh, families uh, to share their information with the DOE and then families um, who qualify can get support uh, from the DOE as well. So it so helps us and it helps you. So that's something that you can start filling out uh, in July. And in the fall, we will send home, we'll backpack home with your child, a printed version of the form as well, if that's an easier way for you to submit that information. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Okay, so at this point in time, what we're gonna do is uh, Mr. Kaiser is going to any families who would like to talk all things special education. And 504. And 504, you're gonna go down the hall. Yeah, we're just gonna go out this door. To the right, there's only one classroom down at the end of the hallway. I'll head there now. So if you wanna come talk a little bit more about special education, meet me there. All right, and we'll stay back for any questions. And then if you're going with Mr. Kaiser, you can ask him questions there as well. So you're not missing anything. We wanna make sure everybody got all the information. So if you'd like to talk special education, yeah. You can join Mr. Kaiser and you can also ask him any other questions you have about the school as well. And then we'll just, um, once folks get situated, we'll open it up if there's any other questions. Mr. Rico and I are still here. Otherwise, we can hang and wait for our army kids. <laughs> 